Good morning, I am Jim. And I am Ryan. From TPK here on Woodsuit Riot, and today we are playing Dragon Age Origins. Because I don't like Dragon Age 2 slash don't have it. I, I like Dragon Age 2. Really? Yeah. Uh, to be fair, I haven't played it, so I can't really say much about it. I just have not heard great things. Hey, look, this dude. I like it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah! Uh, Dragon Age is one of my favorite RPGs. I have clocked uh, 150 some odd hours in it. I've clocked less, but still a decent amount. Uh, I played on the Xbox, which is not as good of an experience as opposed to the PC. As he's learning right now, it's awesome. I love the PC. Yeah, the layout and the, the fighting seems better. Uh, we'll get in. Well, I, we probably won't get into it, but if you have the choice, go to the PC version. Oh, man. But uh, I am looking for Brother to a TV on account of he is leading me to the urn of something, something, something. Sacred Ashes. Yes, that. And I forget the exact conversation path that gets this guy. I know that he's an assassin. I just forget the conversation path that gets him to, to reveal himself to me. Well, you just need to keep asking him questions, and then oh, okay. from what you know about Genitivi, you have to figure out that he's... Really? Because I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, I, or you just mash the conversation <laughs> options until you get the one that you <laughs> that want. That is pretty much what I do. Um... <laughs> I really feel like you're missing out on about half this game sometimes. Yeah, that is one of the things we're going to talk about today. We're also going to talk about semi-linear adventuring and the wonderful map in Dragon Age and how I'm pretty much missing out on half this game. Seriously, he's a bit obsessed with the map, though. It's a thing. I, don't know. <laughs> I just like, I like it. It's a nice map. Oh, 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 I got a cunning thing. Intimidate. Yeah. Reveal, reveal yourself to me. Alright, here's what I'm good at. Yeah? Taunt. And Kill him. And beating up an unarmed... He's not unarmed! He totally just used magic on me! Yeah, but it was one guy and there's four of you. Yeah, well, he shouldn't have picked a, a fight... you have a flaming axe. He shouldn't have picked a fight with four people. Kind of picked a fight with him. I didn't pick a fight with him. He said, oh, it's, I'm just gonna drop this charade and... Oh, there, there it is. There's the research. That's what I needed. Uh, so now I have to go do a thing. But, anyway, Dragon Age is, I think, one of the best examples I've ever found of semi-linear adventuring. Now, watch me browse this menu. It's very exciting. Find the urn. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Quest. Thanks for that. Okay. I had no idea. No, I am going to, to find the urn of Sacred Ashes so I can cure Arl Eamon so that he can represent me at the lands meet and so things can happen. But, I also you also have to do a bunch of other things. You have to... Uh, get the elves on your side, or the werewolves. I forget which one I picked this time, but... Oh, it was elves. It was elves. I'm a loyal elf. That's right. I am a, I am an, a loyal elf. So That yeah. actually was not helpful at all, because I'm wearing a helmet. <laughs> I'm like, He's, oh, I'm going to show that I... No. But no. if you look at the portrait in the upper left-hand corner, you see pointed I am an ears. Elf. A loyal elf at that. And yes. uh, I begrudgingly supported the uh, elven guy, because pretty much everyone in Dragon Age is a dick. Yeah, there's usually not a good option. Although with the elves and werewolves, there is actually a very good option. Yeah, and I picked the wrong one. Oh, I picked the elves. No, well, elves pick, are dicks. Yes, but picking the elves is the good option in that you can cure the werewolves and get the elves on your side. That way, both sides are happy. I have never managed to do that without just murdering everyone. Really? Really? Wow. I didn't even know there was a way to kill the werewolves. Uh, yeah, there is. Anyway. Uh, no, but if you... if You you can do these things. You also have to go and, and recruit the dwarves. You, you have all these factions that you're supposed to recruit for... Oh, yeah. No, I don't, I don't care what you have to say. I also don't care what these people have to say, and they're my friends. Well, friends. I mean, one of them is Morgan. Well, fair enough. But you can do them in any order. Uh, you can drop, you can stop doing one and start doing other ones. Uh, there is sort of an advisable order to do them in. Uh, for example, I I don't ever go and deal with the dwarves until much much later. Because um, uh, it's a long, intensive adventure, and and a lot of the things in the for the dwarf ones are a little bit harder than some of the other areas. 
but it all scales to your level anyway. So you can go wherever you want at any point, and you fight stuff that is relatively at the right Now this guy, for you. this guy I just picked a fight with. I just picked a fight with him for no reason. Yep, so uh, he just murdered an innocent shopkeeper. Aww, well, let's see if he was innocent or not. <gasps> That's right. Well, maybe that guy was... He was a knight of Redcliffe. He was one of Arleman's knights. He's been looking for the urn of sacred ashes. Maybe see? he was also a dick. That's no reason just to kill somebody. You just killed a guy! For less reason than that. Yeah, well now I'm gonna kill these guys too. Well, okay, that's fine. They're cultists and they have big axes. Oh, enemy spellcasters. I have an allergy to enemy spellcasters. So, uh, if you guys see one, let me know in the comments. But, no, I I like semi-linear adventuring. I'm, I'm a big fan of sandboxes, and I think we do want to play a sandbox game today. Um, or later, rather. Uh, as we record this, we're recording about them today. And... And I like the freedom and autonomy that it gives people, but running a sandbox can be a big challenge for a lot of reasons. I mean, they can get really big, they can get really unwieldy. I mean, there's this paralysis of choice that happens. When wow, that's a lot of guys. Um, Most of these guys don't have weapons. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is probably not a great plan for them. Uh, not, not, not so much. I mean... There's a lady in the skirt who's punching you and dealing one point of damage. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, no, I, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna let this. Yeah. We, I'm we, just gonna let this happen. You don't even really need to do anything um, for this. Yeah. Oh, tank is back. Yeah. But I like. I, I ran. I ran a semi-linear game for a long time, and you know where you sort of, you 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 present people with a couple of options that make sense, and they kind of don't run. I hate it when they run. And they pick they, they pick one or two that that work for them, and you follow those paths. And but every everything sort of leads to the same general result. I mean, for for me in Dragon Age, I'm a Grey Warden, and my result is I want to stop the blight. That's how I roll. I'm also trying to remember where the church is because that I think is the next place I need to go. Always go up. Yes, right. Always go up. Thank you. <sighs> Rules in. <laughs> it leads me up and to the right. Yes. Games we should totally play. Totally gonna do it. I'll get Ryan to play that one. Oh. But, uh. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, where am I going? Uh, I think you just tried to leave. Yeah, I don't wanna do that. No, you, you didn't go up. You went just to the right. Oh. Well, I got distracted. I got distracted thinking about semi linear adventuring. Right. Well, uh, yeah. I run currently a sandbox myself, but it is a sandbox that often has very semi-linear uh, trappings to it, I suppose. Um, and th that's not a bad thing. I mean, that, a lot of sandboxes end up that way anyway. Uh, they don't all necessarily have to lead to the same end, but you might have a few overarching plots that go throughout your sandbox. Uh, a few that have started to come into play. Uh, and whether they will continue to come to play is up to my players, essentially. That is the one way to do that. Uh, you just, you know, uh, like Jim had said, you get this present, uh, presentation of a bunch of choices of what to do. You give them a bunch of hooks, and the party can make up their own choice for that. Uh, in the same way the Dragon Age does, you can do it in whatever order you want, but they all eventually will lead to a sim well, they will eventually lead to stopping the blight. Uh, and, you know, how much of a dick you are before that moment is sort of the question. I'm a big dick. Um, no, I think the real distinction there, I mean, I mean, sandboxes have things that happen in them, too. I mean, they have well, yes. things that go on and things that go on. In, I mean, one of the great things about them is that they're, they, the world persists independent of the player characters. But I think the important distinction between a sandbox game and sort of a semi-linear game is... A semi-linear game has a story. Yes. I mean, in, in Skyrim, for example, or Amalur, which is the sandbox game that we are going to play eventually, um, because I, I, I will admit I like it more than Skyrim. 
But, oh, I have to say things. Um, I saw the bodies, and I'm going to kill all your people now. Sorry, just let me start this fight. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, there's a story. I mean, my story is that I am stopping the blight. I mean, of course, everything that I'm doing is going to involve stopping the blight, because that is the object of the story. Whereas, a sandbox game, I mean, whether it's Skyrim, whether it's Amalur, the story is whatever I want to be. I mean, the story can be that I become the Dragonborn and things happen, or, or, or the, you know, the Fateless One, if I'm playing Amalur, but it doesn't have to be. I can I can just become the head of the Fighters Guild and retire. Well, you know? not in Skyrim, because there's no Fighters Guild, but... Well, I can become the head of the Companions and retire. Technically, there is no actual head of the Companions. Shut up. <laughs> just say Mean that in the nicest way possible. Uh, I also don't know where. Oh, oh, hey, I found him. And he's not dead. Nope. In fact, he goes on to write a bunch of books. Yay! Or he wrote them before this. That's actually kind of unclear. Ooh. But I like semi-linear games because they they bridge that happy medium between a linear game. I mean, they give people choices and. Yeah, I'll get Morgan to fix him. She's she's super good at that kind of thing. They give you all kinds of interesting choices, but at the same time, they don't they don't cause that same kind of paralysis of options. Um, I moved to a sandbox because I want my players to tell the story that they want. I mean, I I don't I don't like having a story. I don't like having an arc that is supposed to happen because I just in role playing games and tabletop games I don't like the idea that there's a thing that's supposed to happen it's a cooperative storytelling yeah. effort I mean in, in video games I do like it in Dragon Age I love the semi-linear play because it's just me and I'm exploring this world and exploring this story rather than it just sort of kicking me out the door and slapping me on the ass and going alright go do your thing hero or villain yeah. You know, whatever floats your boat. Or, you know, just guy who churns butter. Yeah, I know. Ch butter churning guy? Nobody makes games about butter churning guy. Not even Peter Molyneux makes games about butter churning guy. I was about to say, have you played Fable? I'm pretty sure there's a mini game involving butter churning. I'm not saying there isn't a mini game involving butter churning, and uh, I haven't really played Fable. I've played a bit of Fable 3, but not enough to really know anything about it. Okay, well, at least in. I think it was Fable 3 that you, you can just make pies. If you pie making, do, I did actually for a while. That was a good source of income. But yeah, if you don't want to just do that the whole time, just make pies. You can do that. That is actually true. That's a good point. All right. People make those games. Most people will not play those games. Peter well, Molyneux is a mad, mad fan. Nobody wants to hear the story of of Peter the Cheesemaker. Unless Peter the Cheesemaker turns out to be the son of a dragon and must save the world. Yeah, I mean, yeah. in that case, that's an interesting story. Yeah, but. I mean, in a sandbox, you're free to become a cheesemaker. I just sort of negotiate with my players not to. And I think, ultimately, the decision about whether to make, whether to make a tabletop game, a sandbox game, or a semi-linear game, or or a linear game... I don't, I don't really... I won't say that I don't advocate linear games. Whenever I run Spear of the Century, it's totally a linear game. It depends on what you're going for. It's, it's, and yeah. uh, also for how long it's going to be running. I mean, a, a sandbox that you know is only going to run for a few sessions like it's during the summer... not worth your effort. Yeah, it's incredibly pointless. Unless you're going to use it again. Yeah, if you're going to bring it back up, that's a whole other thing. But if you're just going to run it like for a couple sessions, or even just one session, there's no reason to do a sandbox. You do a, a linear adventure that makes much more sense. And one of the things I like about Dragon Age, and it sort of illustrates the semi-linear nature of it, is uh, the map. Yeah, I'm just going to pause it right in the middle of the fight. Yeah. I don't care. I'm still winning that. The map has all kinds of things on it that are interesting. Uh, that you might you might be interested in, you might not. You, know, you might be like, oh, the hinterlands and the southern hills and the Brazilian passage. But you can't go there. You can't, you, you, I mean, you are not wandering around the countryside constantly. Seriously, half the time in Skyrim, I am lost in a bush somewhere. And then picking that bush for precious, precious herbs. Oh, I love herbs. So good. But here, I mean, what you have are the points of interest. 
And these are the essentials. These are the places that are relevant. I mean, we've got the village of Haven that I just came from. I'm currently in the Ruined Temple. I remember, and I associate these with my memories. I remember, I think I killed a kid in Redcliffe Castle because I'm a jerk. Lothering, the town that I visited and got a bunch of my party members from, and then got burnt up by the Darkspawn. Uh, the whole forest thing. Where I apparently totally messed up the werewolf quest. Yeah, we're going to get into that one a little bit later. Oh, shut up. Denarim, where all the village people are. What? There's village people there. Like? No, not the YMCA village people. Then why would you say village people? Well, because they're villagers and they're people. They're the village uh, Don't people. all villages? Like, does Redcliffe Village not have village people? No, they're all dead. No, they're not. Well, a lot I of saved them, them. No, they're fine. I think we lost the innkeeper, but that was about it. Oh, you lost the fat guy? Yeah, well, you know. I mean, he was hard a to jerk, keep, but. It's hard to keep up heels on Nightmare. What can I say? Well, okay. Fair enough. But I love, I love the way the map points out things that are relevant and things that are interesting um, and invites you to think about things outside of that but doesn't motivate you to spend a lot of time wandering around in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you still have encounters in between places. Uh, the, the DLC just adds new spots on the map. It's... Oh, I'm stunned. That's unfortunate. Excellent. There we go. But it's oh, there's more guys. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's always there's more guys. There's always more guys. I mean, you can see in the mini-map there's the triangle pointing to even yeah. more guys still. But And it's not one of those maps... <coughs> Yeah, I'm just pausing in the middle of the fight again. It's not one of those maps where you fill it in. It, it comes pre-filled in. Well, I mean, yes and no. I mean, when you... The, the points of interest fill in more. True. So when you start, there's only the Brickalian Forest, the elf place to go there. Mm -hmm. And then as you explore more, you get more points of interest. Yeah. And uh, it's, but it's still just the points of interest. Yeah, it's not... A, I mean, it's probably, I guess, because Dragon Age isn't really an exploration game. Skyrim's much more about exploration. Yeah. But at the same time... Now that every sort of civilized game has quest markers, I prefer Dragon Age's method of doing it. I mean, there isn't a state where... Let me start that sentence over again. <laughs> Fighting and looking at things and... The problem with, with it... So I remember playing Morrowind. Morrowind was my sort of sandbox game for a long time. And... In Morrowind, the, the, this is pre-quest markers. Oh god. Uh, Morrowind is pre-quest markers. Which means, if you had to go out in the woods and find something, guess what? You're going out in the woods and finding it. This is also pre-quest log. This was just a <laughs> No, journal. no, Morrowind had a... Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. it had a journal that you had to flip through manually to find your quest. Fair so enough. if you did that a whole bunch of stuff ago, like, to get the quest... You had to flip back quite a ways. No, no, the uh, the second expansion added in an actual like real quest log. Okay, well, but still it, it originally was so, so useful. Yeah, but, they, they didn't. They added that in because it was basically necessary. Yeah, it was blessed and wonderful. But I mean, you had to legitimately sort of explore to figure out where everything was, and and I mean, it wouldn't it wouldn't mark it on your map unless it was really important, like a major city. I'm going to quick uh, force field my tank because I think this is going to go poorly for her. There we go. Now she is protected. And my ranged attackers are just going to kill everything. Because that's how I, we do this. So, no hands. But whereas in a game like Skyrim, which is, you know, the the inheritor of Morrowind, uh, which was Elder Scrolls 3, Skyrim was Elder Scrolls 5? Yeah. Yeah. There was Oblivion in between the. Uh, yeah. Which. And soon there will be other schools online, which I am not looking forward to. I am going to avoid that one. <laughs> because I just started a PhD program, and my free time is very, very precious. So. Nah, nah, nah. Okay, I'm spending my free time recording videos for you people, so you feel very on. But, no, in, in, in Skyrim you have quest markers. So, you're not just exploring for that quest anymore. Now, they do a really good job of, of giving you other reasons to explore. I mean, the, the whole yeah. world is designed so that you can see that thing just on the horizon. And you know you know, you know know that there's always, there's always one more thing to go and look at. 
And that is half the time why I get lost in places. This Morgan. looks like a really busy room uh, full of people. Yeah, again, but there's a lot of cultists without weapons, so. Yeah. Um, that wasn't right. really too much. I have to take care of this enemy spellcaster on account of I have an allergy and I get all. Mm, there we he, go. he has an issue. I do. It, it's okay. We're working on it. Usually with fire. Um, we work on it with fire. Meliana, I need you to arrow slain that enemy spellcaster. Dragon Age is very unsubtle in some of their <laughs> naming practices. You find. Look, arrow slaying. Arrow that makes people dead. I got no problems with that. It, it works. But, I mean, I can't ruin my tank all the way over there. I have things to do. Yeah, there, there's a lot of dudes. Oh, man. But, no, I mean, in Skyrim, it, it fills in maps a little bit, but... I mean, you already... You, you always know... About to oh, crap. Now I just hit the uh, interface. This is about to become a problem. So, <laughs> this is me being terrible so, at Dragon Age. Yeah, he's gonna pay a little bit more attention to this for a <laughs> second. Ryan, you're up. Take over. Great, it was me. Uh, what were we even talking about before? Maps! We we're talking about maps! Right. Jesus, man! Maps. Aren't you in love with maps? I have a certain affinity for maps, but I do not have quite the nerd boner that Jim does for maps. Uh, I do agree, and sort of disagree with him about the, the way the map is laid out. Uh, for those of you who have used 4th edition D&D, &D, uh, the Dragon Age map is sort of similar to the way that whole game was envisioned. The uh, the points of light in the darkness. Yeah. Uh, the, the important towns that are the bastions of civilization holding out against everything bad in the darkness. Um, and there was also sort of a counterpoint to that. Oh, as crap! The points of darkness... And there was another mage there, and that's very funny to me. That is why I am dying. <laughs> Kill that. Kill it. Kill it dead. I don't think this is going to work out too I don't well. think so either. Oh, God. But I this do find is, it very funny. This is going very badly. Um, th this is sort of awesome. Crap, 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 crap. But yes, the uh, the points of darkness, the, the highlights of the bad oh, things Oh, God, there's two well. of them. So, for example, Jim would be in a point of darkness right here, uh, as the town of Haven is less of a, you know, prosperous village and more place where crazy cultists hang out and, uh, what was their thing? It was something with Andraste. Oh, I don't remember. It's been a little while since that I've actually... That actually, I think, I think, leads us into our third point. <laughs> yes, I think it does lead us into our third point. Um, so, oh crap. I'm about to die. Okay, uh, well, we're going to probably have to start over from a previous save here, but... Yeah, I uh, know, I'm, I'm going to ride this out. I'm going to uh, ride this out. Okay, okay, well, we'll see what happens. <coughs> but, uh, yeah, the other thing we wanted to discuss is something that we discovered when uh, we were actually doing a little bit of a Let's Play of yeah, Dragon that was, Age. that was, what, that was like two years ago? Something like that, yeah. It was, I think, when I started my Master's, so yeah, a couple years yeah. ago. Yeah, because that was when we both started grad school. Right, when we both started grad school, because that was a good idea. Yeah. Uh, that was we, a super great point. We, we have bad ideas sometimes, uh, as you can see. Look, no, this is a perfectly good idea. I just didn't I just didn't check the other room is the problem. Yeah, that's... Oh, God, am I stunned? Um, I like the overhead view. I mean, this is the thing is I like the overhead tactical view, but, oh, I'm frozen. Oh, that's a problem. Yeah, that, that's going to be an issue very soon. Uh -huh. um, but anyway... As we were doing this Let's Play, uh, we did the very beginning sections of, uh, of Dragon Age, uh, which mostly involve... What did we start with? An elf? Or... Dwarf. 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 We were we did... dwarf noble. Right, right. We did the jerkiest dwarf noble. Well, Jim, oh, Jim did the jerkiest dwarf It was dwarf so dwarf wonderful. Noble. I actually have a problem playing a jerk in most games. I find that I can't do it. I always want to be the I good no guy. I have no problem. Um, the only exception I have for this is, like, KOTOR, where being evil is a lot more fun. Or at least it's more fun to me, because you get the Force Lightning out of it. Uh, Which seems like a good trade-off. Don't mind me. But, I'm uh, just winning this fight! What we discovered while we were playing this, and this was when you got to the woods section in the beginning, and you have to get some, uh, dark spawn blood in order to complete the ritual Yay. to make yourself a Grey Warden. Uh... He, we were completing all the various uh, sub-quests you can do in that area, and uh, Jim 
said something. He was confused about why he was fighting this one thing. It was uh, a shade that came out when he was doing this quest, and he was like, well, why is there even a shade here? Yep. And I sort of paused for a second and, you know, well, turned to the virtual him as we were not in the same room at the time. That was, and That was back when we were talking to each other. Well, yeah, we were talking to each other over distance. It was a long-distance relationship. Uh, and I was just very confused. Like, why do you not know why you're fighting this shade? There's a whole story about this. This is the shade because there was this jilted lover, and there was this whole big. I still story don't know that story it. because I'm pretty sure I wasn't listening when you told it the first time. Yeah, that's entirely possible. I don't remember it completely offhand now, as it's been a few years since I played Dragon Age Origins. I kind of want to play again now that I'm seeing this. <laughs> Although I also kind of want to get a PC version and PC, PC version that is awesome. was able to play it. But regardless, um, what we learned is that I read things in these games. One moment. Who wins? Jim wins. I believe health potions win. Who got the health potions? Um, your elf. Yeah. Which is me. Okay, sure. Everybody's fine. Well, no, two of them are still dead. Everybody's fine. Everybody tag back in. Everybody get back up. Okay, but they're all going to have those wounds. No, nah, they'll get back to the camp later and deal with it. Okay. Well, as long as there's nothing too serious. No, no, no. Everybody's fine. Well, we, we start everybody's powers. And... All right. In any case, I read things Yeah. in Ryan these games. Reads uh, all the codexes. and. Yeah, that's the thing. If you haven't played Dragon Age, and uh, I'm not sure if we've come across a lot of these things. Jim will tend to bypass a lot of... I click on I everything. I have not picked up a single codex since we started no, I don't, I don't playing think so. this game. Uh, there were like three in Genitivi's house, I'm pretty sure, if he had actually... Look, Dusty Scrolls. It's Dusty gonna be Scrolls. Blank Vellum. It's going to be Blank Vellum. Oh, uh, no, it's Sackmead, actually. Okay, well, uh, there's a... No, it's not a book on the altar. In any case, uh, there's a lot of codex things. You find books everywhere when you're getting quests. There's usually a big story behind it. Yeah, let's, uh, that's let's the actually ending. load into the codex here. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, look, they're, they're, these are entries just for creatures, uh, notes, books and songs, culture yeah. and history. <laughs> look at all my blank spaces. Uh, no, spell combinations, quest related. Yeah, look, quest related is 30. History has 69. Yeah. Culture and history has 69. You can learn all there is to know about elf culture. Or how the, uh, how the, uh, meat in Denerum is supposed to work. Or why it works that way. Yeah. The whole history behind it. Uh, and I learned these things. I don't know if I remember all of it now, because it's a lot of stuff. But they dump all of these on you. Uh, a lot of Bioware games will do this. Mass Effect, uh, they all do similar things. So I know a lot about how the technology of Mass Effect works. You were supposed to get a key from. That I did guy. get. The, I did get the key. I did get the key. I have to go down here. Oh yeah. I got yeah, the yeah. southeast chamber key. Uh, but yeah, they, it, it'll explain a oh, lot about how the world works. Uh, how the technology works, how the magic works, uh, why various groups hate each other, uh, why there was a shade in those woods. Yeah, which I still don't know. No. Um, uh, it involves Tilted Wolf. Sure. It's an unrequited love story. I believe you. Um, so, I mean, my thing with this is that I, I do get these codexes, and I, I do usually pick them up because they are worth experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't, however, read them. And I, it's fun, it was interesting to me because I thought I was always one of those guys that played games for the story until I played a game with Ryan. And he was like, how could you not know all these things? There's all this story and all, this, all these codexes. And I was like, no, 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 no. Next fight. Next fight. This is this is me in Dragon Age. Is my top-down... Guys, could you maybe... Oh, never mind. Is my, my top-down tactical view of, of Dragon Age where I run around... Smashing things in the face with fiery axes, tanking and spanking, or in some cases not even having a tank, which was really fun to do for a while. Am I going the right way? Just keep clearing rooms. You'll oh, find I found a closed door. Oh, look, a library. See, ancient texts. Actually, ancient texts are good because they have a que they usually have quest things in them for me. Yeah, these scrolls, I'm slowly collecting them. Why? Quest rewards. Seriously, that's it. 
And if you actually were to read about those scrolls, it's a whole thing about a bunch of guys who were trying to uh, work out a bit about how magic works. It's not that I don't believe you. It's just that I don't care. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I mean, it's... I don't want to... Here's the main hall key. I don't want to say gameplay over story because... Oh, oh, but I can't unlock these. Leliana, you are my chest opener. That is worthless. That is also worthless. Actually, that is not... No, that's worthless. Yes, um, but... Yeah, it's the gameplay over story versus story over gameplay. Uh, as I said earlier, the Xbox version of this does not play anywhere near as well as the PC version. Uh, however, I gritted my teeth and got through the combat, uh, which is a pain in the ass when you... Well, excuse my French in that case. But... Uh, it, it's a pain when you're on the Xbox version. In it's, French, it's le ass. Well, yes. I believe it's le but. but. Um, it's, it's not as easy. Um, well, or even easy. It's not as manageable. Let's put it that way. That's even more uh, to the point. You notice how he's, you know, pausing and issuing orders to individual people, and this is all really easy to do on the fly as he's, uh, as he's working along here. And the, carrying on a conversation. And carrying on a conversation. And going to kill that enemy spellcaster. Yeah, you, and you can't really do that in the Xbox version. Or not. But <laughs> I was very, very interested in the story. It had, it really had me hooked. Um, it's a terrible world that I would never want to live in, but it's an interesting world. Uh, and I wanted to learn more about it. Uh, I am sort of obsessed with world building. Um, and if a game does it really well, or a book does it really well, I will forgive other story deficiencies. Uh, and that... I, I have very different opinions on some books uh, with some people for that reason. Um, I do not get bored of Wheel of Time, for example. Don't know how many... You realize that Wheel of Time is now a dated reference, right? The it, when... it just finished. <laughs> when did it... the last Wheel of Time book come out? Like, last year! Really? Yeah. Jeez. I thought it was way before that. No. It, it just finished. I mean, th the author is dead, and it just finished. Fair enough. So, you know, that's not that dated. Um, I, you know, I, I would say Game of oh, Thrones, crap. but Game of Thrones is actually really good both ways. It's got really good characters and really good world building. Uh, whereas, for a real time, I really stopped caring about most of the characters a few books ago. But I want to see how it ends. So with the, the end of the story and the last of the world there. I'm just going to soak up some arrows here. But, yeah, I mean, whereas for me, I love gameplay. I mean, I like story. I like games with strong stories. I like making fun of games that don't have strong stories. But if it doesn't have strong gameplay, I find it really hard to care about a game if it's not interesting for me to fiddle around with and play. If it doesn't have, you know, neat levels or... Need abilities or something for me to do. Because if I wanted to experience a really good story, <coughs> I have tons and tons of books that I could be reading. Um, and there are some games that deliver the best of both worlds. And Dragon Age might even be one of those games. Yep, Dragon Age. But for is me, I was so to. I was so into the. Um, the gameplay. The yeah, combat. just the, the the tactical combat and the you know the. Figuring out what what my spell combos and things I wanted to use and group dynamics because I needed to have a group of people who worked well together in terms of abilities. Like right now, I'm using my tank and a bunch of long range attackers, um, but I also need to have a group of people who didn't totally hate each other or drive me crazy with their banter, and that is considerably harder to pull off. Yeah, why Morgan is in his group when that is one of the uh... because I don't like win. She's more interesting than Wynn. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I, I ran with Wynn for a really long time, and I wanted to run with Morgan, partly because I'm a jerk to people. Yeah, and Morgan's... this character is a jerk to people, and Morgan really likes that. Morgan is definitely She's okay with that, uh, whereas Wynn is very much not a fan. Because everyone is dead. Um, Liliana is my girlfriend, I believe. Um, She's all right. And that's why she's hanging out with me, because uh, I really like her company. And Zevran is here because I needed another archer and I didn't want a warrior. Also, Zevran's also a little amoral. Also, he's an elf. And, uh, go elves. At least in this game. 
But yeah, I mean, I mean, I had to, I, 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 my, you know, carefully manage all their gear and make sure they can hit the requirements and occasionally bootstrapping them into requirements for other gear and give them items and like that. That part of the game was really interesting to me. Like I get to go to interesting places and explore these. You know, halls and tunnels and whatnot, and kill tons and tons of stuff in them uh, while triumphing. Because the thing, the quandary that I had when I started playing with Ryan was wasn't you know, oh, you don't read the books. It was well, why wouldn't you play the game on Nightmare? I mean, we're we we are on uh, Nightmare right now, and I have never not played this game on Nightmare difficulty. I like now. Part of it is I like playing games on the on their hardest possible difficulty. That is a thing that I like doing. But also, just in general, you know, it's not that difficult. I can think of three or four fights in this game that are particularly hard. But all the rest of them, you know, I man I manage just fine. I even manage just fine uh, without a tank. And, you know, you get the job done. It's trickier, but it's it's it makes it much more interesting. And uh I generally don't play games on the highest difficulty. I've actually found that I am not that good at games. As much as I really, really like them. I didn't used to be either, and then I started playing games on the hardest difficulty, and uh, suddenly... Well, yeah. I mean, I suppose I could do that, but there's... The other element of that is that I get frustrated with them sometimes. Like, I tried playing... Uh, I forget if it was Dark Souls or Demon's Souls. I haven't actually played that yet. Um... It came up on PlayStation Plus for free, so I thought, well, I should give this a try. It's getting all these good reviews. People are saying good things about it. Yeah, they're saying it's really, really hard, but whatever. I should be able to deal. I played plenty of games. <laughs> well, I started that, and the little zombies that you can kill in two hits were killing me. They they were destroying me because I would come around a corner, and one of them would be behind a door, and it, it would hit me like three times, and I'm dead. Um, and, uh, I, I stopped playing that game after about, well, it was once the, you got to an area where it, it opened up and you can go to different spots and it was some sort of hub. Um, I wasn't 100% sure what was happening in that game at the time, uh, because there was very little to read. Yet. I like reading, but there was little to read at the time. I assumed it would fill out a bit more once I played a little bit more. Uh, but at that point, I didn't know what was happening. There was nothing in the story that had me hooked. So when I got frustrated, I stopped playing. Uh, I believe at that point I went to Skyrim and I made a character similar to what I was doing in that and just played with that because that was more fun to me. I could kill things and still have fun. Uh, yeah, I, I think for Dragon Age it's at least partly the difference between playing on the console and playing on the PC. The console version of this is a is horrendous to control, essentially, in comparison. I think Dragon Age 2 fixed that a little bit, in that they made it a bit more action-oriented, as opposed to uh, tactical, uh, which would probably really wouldn't like it as much. Yeah, which is exactly why I, everything I've seen about Dragon Age 2, I just I, I don't enjoy it as much, because it's less, it's less top-down tactical. You know, here I can, I can manage my guys, I can go to control places, I can... Oh, God! <laughs> You, you can die when you're not paying attention. And that's where we're going to end this video. <laughs> it's with all my guys getting massacred. So we will see you in a couple of weeks. If you want to uh, see us talk about game, uh, tabletop gaming more, you can read a, you can read TPK, which will, of course, be linked below. Um, you can come back here in two weeks for another video. And Tuesday and Friday for my vlogging and occasional music with Kaylee. Who is one of the other rioters? Our journey ends. <laughs> See ya. Bye. I'm like, oh, here's here's like what ten guys? Oh, he's doing push-ups. I want to help you do your workout. That's that's why I'm here. Um, because really, these guys are already in jail, and I'm just beating them up for no reason. <laughs>